Each day, more and more people are listening to music on Spotify. And that's also true for podcasts. Next time you're on the Spotify app, make sure to follow Thrive Loud with Lou Diamond. Enjoy listening to Lou, his incredible guests, and all of the amazing episodes. Listen, follow, and share. Thrive Loud on Spotify. Well, it looks like the clock is about to strike midnight on this Cinderella story, turning Lou Diamond into the proverbial pumpkin. Ladies and gentlemen, prepare to witness the greatest happening in sport, sudden death podcasting. I have been to the Great Wall of China. I have seen the pyramids of Egypt. I even witnessed a grown man satisfy a camel. But never in all my years as a sportscaster have I witnessed something as improbable, as impossible, as what we've witnessed here today. It's Thrive Loud with Lou Diamond. Get ready to Thrive Loud with Lou Diamond. Welcome everyone to another episode of Thrive Loud with Lou Diamond, connecting you to the most inspiring and amazing people that are thriving each and every day. I'm your host, Lou Diamond. Today on Thrive Loud, we have a professional baseball player, husband, father, and author. He suffered a major brain injury and subsequent surgery and had to persevere to the highest level of his sport. He captured his journey in his book, One Line Drive, which becomes available on March 9th. Thrive Loud listeners, get ready for a phenomenal session and a great story as I bring you Daniel Ponce de Leon. Daniel, how are you today? I'm doing great. How are you doing, Lou? I'm spectacular. Um, I, I love talking to athletes. I, we're, we're literally, this is, we're in the same county, just at different extremes right now in Florida. I'm enjoying being in Florida. I won't lie to you. It's the baseball season's coming up. And uh, I heard about your story and was utterly impressed about it. And then I checked out your book and went through some of it and was even more impressed. Our listeners would love to hear a little bit about this. If you could, Daniel, go back a little bit and explain maybe where, what, it, what led to not only writing this book, but probably one of the more pivotal moments in your life. Um, it goes back to a day in May, uh, you know, pitching a regular baseball game. Uh, it was one of those earlier games where you had the kids day and they have all the schools there, a bunch of kids and um, just get into my second inning, end up grooving a fastball to a real good hitter. And he drove it right back where it came from and got me around the side of the head and uh, pretty much knocked me out for a bit. And then after that, you know, led to a series of getting rushed to the hospital, getting checked on, and then, and then having surgery on my brain. Before you go on, when you were knocked out, do, do you remember getting hit or was it just the complete throw the ball boom and then next thing you know you're you're on route to the hospital when 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 do you what do you remember i remember i remember throwing the ball seeing it come hit me in the head um i remember laying there and everyone's just circling around me and my trainers are asking me questions and i'm you know what's my name birthday etc and i was able to answer all those questions and i'm thinking myself it wasn't too bad you know just probably a little knocked out a little bit probably concussed I was thinking, you know, I'd probably have to pass some concussion protocols later on. I'll be fine in like a week or two. And um, thankfully, my trainer, he, he saw something otherwise. And he called over the ambulance uh, people when they came over and strapped me down and put me in the put me in the ambulance. And then once I got in there, that's when stuff starts speeding up on me. Yeah. You know, I start getting dizzy, start getting woozy and not feeling great. And then once I get into the hospital, that's when I get real spotty in my memory. So um, let's get, let's get to the technical part of it before we get to maybe the higher level of this. Um, what was the exact diagnosis that had happened and what was required uh, to happen to you from a surgical point of view? What, what needed to be done? Well, I think the technical words are epidural hematoma and okay. um, pretty much I have a bleeding on my brain. And, uh, so they had to take off my skull, stop the bleeding, uh, let the swollenness die down a little bit. And once it was down enough, they were able to put my skull back on and, uh, in hopes that it doesn't re-swell. So they had to, you know, fill me up with sodium and some other stuff too, I imagine, and keep the swelling down really. And if my brain were to re-swell, 
then they would have to take off the skull and um, I would have to have a mesh block mm. in the way, really, just to hold my brain in there. Seriously. And that would require me to have disabilities. So they went in, took the, took the immediate precautions that they needed to. And then obviously um, there had to be this period of rehabilitation or even um, there was a surgical component to what needed to be done. Um, during this early stage of the window, as an athlete, I'm, you know, were, were you more concerned about your life or your career? Where were you at that point in that time? For the first week, I had no idea where I was. Okay, fair <laughs> uh, enough. You know, um, and as I read the book, you know, I, I'm able to see the emotions from everyone else. And like, that's what, like, what wears me down. Like, dude, everyone felt this way about me the whole yeah. time. You know, you read that Scott, the trainer's there just watching the pressure monitor, make sure it doesn't pass the threshold. Because if it goes above that, I'll have to go back in for surgery. And that is not good. So there's all these like little moments in between. And uh, for me, it was just, I just wanted to sleep really. Yeah. So um, how long were you hospitalized during this, this window? How long did it take? A little over two weeks, less than three. So right in there, um, I was in the ICU for a little over a week and a half, two weeks. And then they moved me into, um, what was that called? Regular a regular, a regular yeah. some, some part of the hospital. Yeah, yeah. I, forget, I forget the proper word for it. But um, yeah, I was able to stay in there for a couple of days. And, you know, they just did the basic test. Like, can I get out of bed? Can I walk? Can I shower? And uh, so I'd have like two or three people watching me shower at all times. So all of this going on, you're starting to kind of come back um, into the, the reality. And your brain is obviously swelling at this point and getting and getting better. Um, anything happened to you maybe, uh, more at a higher level, more so than just at this point, are you, is there any point that you recognize, wow, I'm lucky to be alive? Yeah. Uh, yeah. At first, you know, I had no clue. I had no clue who my doctor was. He'd come in right. and yell me, Hey, Daniel, get up. And then I get mad. Like, dad, who is this guy yelling at me? You know, he's like, <laughs> Hey, be nice. He's your doctor. I was like, Oh, I didn't know, oh, man. I didn't even know I had surgery, but, um, once, once I start talking to my dad and, you know, people who are there, my wife, girlfriend at the time, um, you know, they start telling me things that happen and I'm just like, when did this happen? You know, didn't, don't really remember. So for me, it wasn't as big as a like worry, but for everyone else, you know, they're living moment by moment on just the pressure monitor, really. Right. Two weeks pass by, you get out of the hospital, um, what was the, the rehabilitation process for, for you at that point when you were home? When I was finally able to leave, well, at, once I left the ICU, I knew in myself I was fine. I okay. just was weak, you know, but otherwise I knew everything felt same. Everything felt normal. I had all my memory. Uh, you know, I was able to still solve Sudokus. That was like my new thing. Once. <laughs> like, that was like the thing that they tested me on with Sudokus and they gave me easy ones, knocked those out. And then I got my phone. I started doing hard ones and uh, still kind of do them to this day. Okay. And uh, from that point on, I knew I was fine. So at that point, I knew I just had to check boxes off for others to know I was okay. Gotcha. All right. So at this, how old are you at this point when this happened? What was the age? Oh, 2017. So 25? 25. 25. Um, you're, you're now at this point. Okay. Is how long until the question came back that basically said, cause you were in trip triple a, right. When, when, the, when this happened on your way to the majors and now you're trying to assess, okay, had this injury starting to recover. I'm alive. I'm here. Uh, at what point is it like, all right, well, I'd like to get back and start to, was there ever a point that you thought about, I'm never going to play baseball again? No. Okay. Never, never was a point. Um, I, yeah, once I left ICU, it was, let's go, you know, I'm ready to go. Uh, just, and then, I, you know, I had to get instruction. Like I had to wait until my brain was fully healed to even start doing any activity. So that was pretty much my next step was just learn how to recover. Yeah. So then I dug deeper and started researching and learning about the body a little bit more and learning how to focus healing, I guess. Yeah. Did you, did, uh, did you learn, well, share with the listeners some of the things maybe you learned, like, did you, did you do meditation? Did you do other things to, that might've been what some people, what you may have thought previously was a little woo woo, but kind of, you know, really helped you in, in your recovery process? Yeah. Um, well, 
one thing I learned was that your gut, gut bacteria is your second brain, really. Um, so I did a lot of focus on that. And you start, I started learning about the gut more and um, what else, uh, all things like on the inside of your body. And it, one thing was like, if everything was going right and clean, then it was a, it would be able to focus all its attention on healing my brain. So I started getting into superfoods, greens, you know, probiotics, all the sorts and learning what's good and what works better, you know, also fish oils too. Yeah. Uh, my wife has a, like a holistic cousin so she you know said things all the time about brain recovery and all that and it was a lot of help so you became you became a sudoku expert you got yourself healed and then you got yourself back on on the path at what point uh did you maybe look at this situation and and it probably led to the the thing you put together appreciating life your friends your family and your fortunate situation did that like hit you one day yeah. Uh, one of the days I was in the hospital, uh, I believe Scott came in with a stack of just cards and there were, these cards were from people I didn't even know. They were from all the stand, all the people who were in the stands, people watching the game, open card after card. And I remember like coming to tears a little bit here and there, like, what, what do these people care about me for? You know, just another professional baseball player passing through, but you know, it shows that there's love in the world still and people do share their love with others. And, and then I get home from, from the hospital and St. Louis had two big old posters that won the team signed in St. Louis, who I didn't even play with half those guys yet. And then the other poster was another one that they left outside in Bush stadium. They had fans come and they signed it and left all these great messages. And I'm like, how do all these people care about me? You know, just the guy. I know from an outsider, I looked into all this whole story, the research, um, and and I think this is actually important. Um, how much, when did you make your major league debut when you moved through back to, when did you go back to AAA and then how much longer did you make it eventually to the Cardinals? The next season. Right. So, uh, I mean, do you appreciate how amazing that is on to its own? I mean, on a serious note, you literally almost weren't be able, you wouldn't be able to be here right now because it, it's almost the equivalent of a gunshot, what basically happened to you. And anything could have gone wrong. Like you just said, you could have had mesh inside your brain. Doctors could have, you were this probably close to not being able to play baseball. And within a year, you're pitching at the, at the highest level. I, I just look at that. I'm like, maybe, 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 you're, maybe you're a Superman. But I look at it as an incredible, uh, uh, unbelievable amount of perseverance and an unbelievable amount of time. Yeah. Um, I mean, the one thing I have yet to touch on is the, the faith part of it. And yeah. um, I don't people recognize that we live in a spiritual world. Um, there's a lot of powers through and we don't, a lot of people just live physically and there's a lot of physical. And if you, if you read, I'm a, I'm a Bible man and I read the Bible and it's, um, you know, that's a, that's a healing in itself. And um, there was a bunch of prayers going on. I mean, I'm receiving cards and saying, we're praying for you, text messages, calls. Uh, the first thing I had my dad do when, when I finally recognized I got hit in the head in the hospital, I had him come over and pray over me. That's what I needed. That's what my soul needed. And then right off, uh, he like came, hovered over me and hugged me and prayed. And just, there's that peace. Hmm. I love it. You got a perspective, a higher power, and you keep moving forward, which is what thriving individuals do. Um, I want to dig a little into baseball here. And that is obviously, uh, I saw your debut, at least the stats on that day. Like, you want to share with the listeners, just you had a pretty good opening outing when you came to the Cardinals. And please, please don't be modest. <laughs> okay. Well, we could start with, um, you know, the day regular warm up. Um, you know, one thing I had Yadi Merlina, who's one of the best catchers for those that don't know to throw to. So that's, a, that's already blessed right there. Um, you know, going in my warm ups and, uh, Right before I get on the mound to go start warming up for the game, my last throw on the flat ground in the outfield, I tweak my neck. And uh, that's that's not something you want. And it was one of those tweaks where, like, I couldn't turn my head to the left. And oh, that's man. where I need to look to go to home. <laughs> so that was already issue number one. And then, um, you know, so during the anthem, I had my coach, you know, digging his elbow into my neck, trying to just get me just a little bit. And then I cut the bullpen short, ran over back into the dugout, had the trainer just loosen me up. So I was already like a little bit of panic just to start your debut. But um, right. I don't know if that was panic or that was helping because that's all I could think about for half the first two innings, you know. And after that, it finally faded. But um, 
did have the game and my focus was just throw strikes, you know, don't be walking a lot of guys in your first outing and attack. And um, that's pretty much what I did the whole time. Didn't strike out too many people had two walks and uh, no hits. That yeah. was, that was it. I, I I think for those who aren't even baseball fans, just look to, to get to pitch on a major league mound is an amazing accomplishment to do it. Well, even more importantly, to to do it with the, I, I just want to say the hiccup that hit your your career development of this, I think is spectacular. And, you know, family, friends, uh, your faith, all this important stuff now, and now your your family, which is obviously growing. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll share that. You now have, uh, you have three kids right now, four, two, and just newborn. Congratulations again. Thank what do we got? Bo- bo- boys, girls, what's the breakout here? I have a boy, girl, girl. So being a professional athlete in this, in this world, you, you've reached it to the highest level. Um, you get to see the best people at the highest level fr- from a newcomer into it. And now someone who's been doing it for a bit to maintain and stay at that top level. What does it take, Daniel? It takes consistency. And that's, I mean, you've heard it over and over, but then once you finally get there and you see it, yeah, you know, it, that's what it takes. You know, anyone can go out there and do it good. There's, if you look at the minor leagues, all those guys could probably pitch in the big leagues for at least one day with their, with their best stuff. But can you do it over and over against the same guys over and over? That's how you be there a long time. I love asking pitchers this question because I've heard this story that pitchers can be a little superstitious, all baseball players and mm-hmm. specifically uh, pitchers. Do, do you have anything unique with your preparation or something superstitious that you do before an outing? Sadly, no. And I hate, I, hate, I let so many people down, you know, they're always looking for that something, but I don't, I actually am the opposite of that. You know, I, I do have a routine. You can say that, you know, I have a playlist that I like to play, but if I miss any of these, I don't feel off. Gotcha. And I don't feel like I'm going to lose. We're, uh, we're recording this in very early March, uh, 2020. Uh, you're looking forward to the season. Yes. Yes. Very, very excited for this season. Um, just, just want to play some baseball, really, after this long off season. Yeah, I was, and I was going to ask you. I mean, out of all the things that would be strange, everyone after the year of twenty twenty felt like we all lost something. You know, obviously, in many cases, the worst with with uh, the virus taking the lives of so many, but also just like time kind of just got so the baseball season got shortened and shrunk yeah. into different ways. Uh, uh, how did you handle that? You know, from the uniqueness of the of the world you were in at that time the last season i would say was like a lonely season um yeah you know half i only get upset to fill the days of pitch the other days i would get on the bus before the game even started and have to go sit in the hotel room right so me and one of my buddies dakota hudson we have headsets so we get on headsets and pretty much watch the game together but in different rooms while you know sitting in our chairs and you know that's the only way you could really stay together without someone getting mad at you yeah could you have done what the basketball guys had to do last year in that, I mean, the whole bubble in, in, in Florida, do you think like, I mean, specifically the way they did it where like they were stuck in the bubble. I mean, that was really hard for a lot of athletes and, and staying away from their families, especially with a guy who's got a lot of young kids. How would you have had to handle that if that was the situation that baseball had decided to do? I'm not real sure. Honestly, I'm, I'm not one to leave my family, you know, I, I, um, I almost forced my wife to come with the kids like, Hey, you got to do this. I don't want to miss a second with them. But, um, you know, those basketball guys had it tough. So I know mm-hmm. you could see a lot of them did opt out for the season. They don't, it, is it worth it to miss family time to play baseball or basketball? I don't know. You got to make the decision, but some people do have to pay, pay the bills and feed the family. So. It was, uh, I forgot which hockey player it was, but it was one of the guys on the, the Las Vegas Golden Knights. And uh, obviously they were in either Edmonton or Toronto, wherever they were. I think they were all in Edmonton towards the end of the playoffs and they, and they lose. And he was all distraught from the, the hard part of the playoffs, but uh, he got to see his girls when he got home and they showed the, like the phone video of it. And, and he like, it just put it all in perspective. And I, and, and I, I wanted to put it in that um, obviously you had a, a good scare with, with life, with one line drive, you've got a great family and you have great opportunities uh, and, and you have great faith in God. What's the, I guess, when you have perspective, is there some like one core tenant that you hold on to some word or something that always keeps it balanced that you know where your priorities are? Love. 
I think love, love, love is what drives is the driving force behind a lot of things. Like a lot of times, like you, like even when I work out sometimes, you know, I, some days I don't really feel like deadlifting and you know, the weights just doesn't seem right. And then you just like step back and you're like, you know what? I got to do this. I have to do this. I love my family. I want to be good for my family. So I had to go out there and so I don't miss anything. So there's all that little bit of just competition each day and, and the love is what gets me through it really. I love it. It's a great word there. This is a signature question we ask all the Thrive Lab guests, Daniel. I want to see where this goes. Look, you've been thriving in your career. You continue to move onward and upward. But as you know, we all have days when we're not quite kicking on all cylinders. On days when you have trouble thriving, what practice do you seek or what individual do you seek out to get yourself back on the thriving track? Uh, God, uh, you know, he's, he's always the audience. He's always there. He, you can't hide from him sadly. So he's watching you whenever, <laughs> whatever you're doing. So, um, you know, you live by that moment by moment by moment phase. And, um, just like I said, you know, I'll be deadlifting. And sometimes I'm thinking like, I'm, I'm done, you know, I don't really feel like doing it. And then I'll step back and look like, you know, I, I could do it. Just, just got to push through. And then you push through and you feel good after. And, you know, somebody's watching. I like it. We are going to coordinate this so that the show notes and what you're about to share with the listeners um, all coordinates, because I think uh, you have some news to, to report on the date that something's coming out, but we're going to do, this is the plug section of the admin part of the show. Share with the listeners all the places people can find you. And let's talk about this. I'm showing it on the video here. Um, you've got the book, One Line Drive. So tell everyone where they could find it, all the, the social feeds, your social handles. We'll put it all in the show notes, but uh, this book comes out on the day that you're first hearing this episode, which is March 9th. So go ahead. This is your plug section, Daniel. Okay. Um, well, onelinedrive.com, pretty simple. O-N-E-L-I-N-E-D-R-I-V-E.com. And that will take you right to any website and all the links you need. And it has some other information if you want to look further into it. Um, you could probably go on Amazon, Google my name, or not Google, search my name or One Line Drive, and that should pop up. Um, I got... Well, one social media and it is Twitter and that would be underscore Ponce 14. And that is the only social media I have. DMs are open. If anyone has any questions, want to okay. say anything to me, mean or nice, it's fine. I, I, I enjoy the heck ones. No, no, we're only doing nice on here, Daniel. Come on now. Okay. No, no, it's well, funny. Some, stuff. People, some people enjoy heckling. You know, baseball is a heckling sport. I, maybe it's Cubs fans for you, but that, I can't see anything more than that. Come on. You're too <laughs> nice of a guy. Uh, all right, but we will do that. We'll put it on the show notes and make sure everybody has it and, and excited about the book. I think it's great. Uh, permission to go down Fun Street with me here. You're going to like this part of the show. Daniel. Okay. Okay. All right. First of all, I gave you a little heads up at the top of the show. Listeners need to know this. He had no idea how to answer this initially. Can you so share with the listeners in the last 20 minutes? Could you think of an all-time favorite movie? Why don't I make it easier? How about an all-time favorite sports movie? Does UFC fighting count as a sports movie? Well, it will have to be. I don't know, but you love UFC fighting. I love it. It's this. not really UFC. I don't even know what it is, but it's, uh, have you seen the movie The Warrior? Oh, yeah. Oh, definitely. It's pretty good movie. You know, a little family and stuff in there and you know, some drama to it. But um, uh, OK, The Worry is a solid movie. That works. I, the, movie. I'm, t I'm totally on my head right now. Honestly, <laughs> you must have just seen it. <laughs> OK, we're going to do the speed round of Fun Street. Here's how it goes. I'm going to ask you something. I want the first thing that pops in your head. These are things that make you feel good, lift you up mostly make you thrive. That's the idea. Okay? okay. Okay. And this should be pretty good because I think it'll be right in your lean. Okay. A song you love to hear or that pumps you up. Maybe one of those songs on that playlist. Okay. Um, Psalm 34 by Shane and Shane. And uh, I'm not the pump up guy, sadly. Okay. I, I don't know. I'm the opposite. I'm the mellow guy. I like the mellow moves. That gets me focused in the right heartbeat, I guess we could say. I love it. Favorite food that's not a dessert. My wife makes some good chicken enchiladas. Those are bomb. Oh, so favorite. What's a favorite dessert? Chocolate chip cookies and milk. I'm simplest. An activity you wish you did more of? I think I wish I read a little bit more. I do read, but I want just a little bit more reading. An activity you wish you did less of? Go on my phone. If I could snap my fingers, Daniel, and you can go anywhere in the world, where are you? The Maldives. I've seen a lot of good pictures about there, and I want to take my wife on a honeymoon there. Oh, I like that idea. You're bringing the kids, or the kids get to stay at home? They stay at home. <laughs> uh, last question for you here. Um, 
as it relates to athletes, I want to know if you have an idol, um, a favorite athlete. It doesn't have to be baseball, just um, but some professional athlete that maybe you looked up to as a kid or someone is, that's always been one of, you know, that you were a big fan of. Um, you know, I'm an LA kid and I always wanted to be an NBA player for some reason growing up. I had the basketball court. I watched Kobe Bryant a lot. Yeah. Kobe Bryant was kind of the guy I was watching. I try to act like him shooting and stuff. Definitely. We do, we do miss him. I would, you know, it's just a little over a year ago. And I heard something really cool. I heard that um, it's probably going to happen because Jerry West is behind it, but they're thinking of changing the NBA logo to be in the shape of Kobe's really? silhouette. Yeah. And, wow. and, you know, like Jerry West was along the lines of like, you know, that if there was ever, I mean, he would, he drafted him, he picked him, you know, he's got a close tie to him. He is the logo and why not, you know, make yeah. it a little bit more up to date. I thought that was a really cool idea. If they do, they that. should put the, they should at least have it with his tongue out. Tongue too. <laughs> you know, something like that with the shadow. It could, could be tough to do with the silhouette, but you never know. Yeah. Anyway, Daniel Ponce de Leon, one line drive. Book drops literally today for those listening to the show right now. Thank you so much for coming on Thrive Lad. Continue to success this season. Listen, unfortunately, I am a longtime suffering Mets fan, so I'm, I, I don't want to wish you too much good luck, but maybe it could be easy on, on, on the Mets when you play them this year. Maybe just I think I play them. I think I'm pitching against them tomorrow. Well, then, 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 then show me up and, and put up a good number tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on Thrive Lad, my friend. Thanks for having me, Lou. You got it. And to all our listeners out there, thank you for joining us. And until next time, keep thriving onward and upward. And remember, be brief, be bright, be gone. You've been listening to Thrive Loud with your host, Lou Diamond. Head on over to Spotify, Good Pods, or wherever you get your podcasts and subscribe and listen to all of our incredible episodes. Follow Lou at Thrive Loud everywhere on social media and head on over to thriveloud.com to connect directly to Lou and learn how you and your business can thrive loud too. Thanks for listening.